This slide shows uh, the, some part of the systems. The first collection tank, we have a, a drum screw filter, the screw filter that we have used, and the skid that we have proposed. In this case, it was pretty important to us to guarantee a compact solution, and that's the reason why we chose the, the plate heat exchanger and the economic solution, because you will see later on the number of working hours and the flow of the system was not big enough to have a good payback with the pipe shell heat exchangers. So we prefer to have the screw filters in both sides in order to guarantee the plate heat exchanger that we have actually used. And in this case, particular case, uh, both sides of the heat exchanger are uh, uh, cleaned by chemical systems. This slide shows uh, the return of investment calculation. We started from uh, the steam cost that uh, the, um, the, the company was paying. It was around 25 US dollar per megacalories. And then we added 3.9 US dollar per megacalories, which are more related to the pump consumption of the thermal oil. You must consider that in this situation, the boiler was used in order to warm up the temperature of thermal oil. And with the, term, the thermal oil was the, the fluid designed to warm the temperature of the water in the washing machine. So if you use the thermal oil, you must consider also the, the, the power of, um, of the pumps and also the power of uh, all uh, issues, all uh, objects which you need uh, in order to um, treat the exhaust of the boilers. We made the calculation according to the real consumption and we had the 3.9 US dollar per megacalorie for those objects. So the final consumption, it was around 28, almost 29 US dollar per megacalorie. The electrical cost we have considered in the, our return of investment calculation was seven US dollar cent per kilowatt hour. And the, the wastewater temperature uh, uh, in the region uh, for the first reason it was uh, 60 degrees and the reusable water uh, average temperature was uh, 35 degrees. Finally, the flow, it was around uh, six cubic meter per hour. This was uh, a problem for us because as I told you, our system works much better and can pay back itself much better if uh, the flow is higher than this, but anyway, we found a solution that was acceptable for the customer, which accepted, of course, a longer payback time in order to be more environmental friendly. And finally, the working hours per, per year, which were just almost 5,000. So those were the base of our calculation. And over here, you can find the saving. Of course, the saving is mainly related to the thermal energy that you can save because you have warmed out the temperature of the second and the third rinsing, so the reusable water from 35 degrees to 58 degrees. Of course, you have to multiply such a difference by 6,000 liters per hour and the number of hours per year, which are almost 5,000. And so you can have 681,000 uh, megacalories per year. If you multiply this amount by the, the cost of each megacalorie, you will find a final uh, saving of 19,613 US dollar per year. Of course, this is the saving, is a gross saving, because to be fair, you must reduce such cost considering the acid cost and the electrical cost related to the extra pumps that we have installed on our skid. So the final saving is, has been just 18,500 US dollar. The investment cost was almost 115,000 US dollar, everything included, it means also the installation cost is, and so the payback time, it was a 6.2 years. 
the customer has decided to make this project not only because of the saving, which is pretty good, I believe, because the six year is not so much in terms of time, if you consider that the flow was not so big, but even because, as I told you before, it was, it was obliged to make a, to, to build up even a, a cooling tower. Without this cooling tower, it saved some money also because it didn't do the investment and all the running costs is related to it. We didn't consider such kind of expensive in our return of investors investment calculation in order to be on the safety side. But if you consider also those costs, the real payback time drop around the five, a little bit less than five years. So anyhow, it was a good investment for them and they have decided to do that. This is an example of what you can do with a batch machines, which is normally more costly if you compare it with a continuous machine, because of course you need to prepare some infrastructure with all the collection tanks that I showed you before. Of course, when you go to a continuous machine, the investment cost drops and normally the payback time drops as well because the infrastructure is not necessary anymore. This slide shows a washing machine, which is a continuous machine. Continuous machine is a machine that requires fresh water in the same moment that is discharging wastewater. So you don't need to collect uh, the fresh water and the wastewater, and you can go directly to the uh, wastewater rate exchanger. So in this case, uh, it's very easy to be applied. The system is very easy to be applied. And actually the cost and the payback time, uh, it's, uh, it's completely different compared to the scenario that we have seen before. So uh, this was done uh, in Vietnam as well in an Italian factory that uh, is uh, one of our customers in Vietnam uh, in Ungian provinces. The machine was discharging at eight degrees and uh, the cold clean water was filled up at 25 degrees. And of course, uh, in order to reach the temperature required by the recipe, they used to have a steam, normal steam. After the heat exchanger installation, the washing machine discharge was of course always 80 degrees, but by using the heat exchanger, this temperature dropped to 33 degrees before going to the wastewater treatment. And on the other hand, the fresh water was raised by 25 degrees to 72 degrees. Of course, with a such hot temperature in the fresh water, the consumption of the steam, it was significantly reduced with a big savings in terms of money. So the steam consumption before the, the intervention, it was around 1.2 tons per hour. And the steam cost in the, in the factory was 23.76 US dollar per ton. The hot waste water temperature, it was 80 degrees. And the cold water average temperature is, was almost 25. In this case, the flow was much higher than before. It was around 11 hours per day, where 3,160. In order to have uh, the, the saving, it's quite easy. I mean, uh, you have uh, to multiply the uh, differential temperature between uh, the wastewater uh, 80 degrees and the fresh water incoming 25 degrees by the number of liters and by the efficiency guaranteed in our system, which is at least 86%. Dividing such number by 600 calories per kilogram of steam, you will find out uh, uh, how many uh, kilograms of steam per hour you can save, which is around 867. 
if you multiply this number by the number of hours uh, working hour per year and uh, of course uh, dividing by 1000 kilogram which is uh, uh, the, the, in order to to reach the ton and if you multiply this number by the the price of uh, each ton of steam you will find easily your saving which is a 65000 US dollar per year with an investment cost of 78,500 US dollar, your payback time would be around 1.2 years. In this slide, we didn't show you the price of the, the chemicals and the price of the pump, but if you remember the last one, the, those number will not affect so much the payback time, which would be anyway very interesting, let's say 1.3, 1.4 years. So anyway, uh, it will be very interesting. This is, was because uh, in this case, uh, the factory we're talking about uh, is uh, using uh, mainly synthetic uh, processes uh, and all uh, this washing machine uh, was uh, applied after dying. So in this case, uh, the number of chemical used is completely different. Uh, and so the chemical procedure in our system will be used not so often as before. So it's going to affect uh, the, the, the final numbers uh, even less uh, than before. This is another uh, uh, solution that can be applied by an uh, energy efficiency consultant, which is uh, much more related uh, with uh, the machine choice. As we have discussed before, uh, we strongly believe uh, in the partnership that has to be created between the efficiency consultant and the final customer. It means that according to us, energy efficiency consultant should be involved not only in the services, but also if it's possible in the machine decision. Uh, just to give you an example, when you print, if you make a digital printing, uh, after it, uh, you must uh, wash uh, your, uh, your fabric, okay? Actually, the whole technology, which is pre pretty common, especially in the East, uh, in Vietnam as well, is uh, using the Benet machine. Benet machine is a batch machine, is like a big vessel. You put uh, your fabric uh, in uh, this vessel and uh, you fill it uh, with uh, fresh water for a lot of time in order to remove uh, the residual dye stuff uh, that are inside uh, your, your fabric. Uh, we did some calculation for a customer and we didn't uh, do the investment yet, but we strongly believe that uh, it's going to be done very soon. The water consumption with such technology is around 931 liters per kilogram of fabric. If you use a new machine, which is continuous one, it's an and uh, it's something that is pretty common uh, in Italy, but not just in Italy, almost everywhere. Uh, the water consumption drops uh, to 35 liters per kilogram. So can you easily imagine how much it could be the saving in terms of water, steam, and wastewater treatment cost? Actually, uh, sometimes your customer take the decision to go with uh, the old technology just because maybe it's more trustable, because he prefer to stay on the safety side, because he doesn't want to have uh, problems in terms of quality. On the other hand, uh, uh, somehow he cannot uh, easily understand uh, which is uh, uh, the weight of his decision. I mean, uh, which are the cost is related with uh, such a decision really uh, is not just uh, related to, to the uh, energy efficiency, but also with uh, the water consumption. I mean, 931 liters per kilograms, uh, it's a big amount, a huge amount of water compared to the 35, which is the benchmark of uh, such kind of activity. So in uh, Europe, uh, we usually have uh, some literature in order to give us uh, some uh, advice and some support when we try to find out the best technology, which is called VAT, 
VAT means uh, best available technology are made by European Union. There are many commissions to do that. So if you look at them, you can easily find out which is the best solution for each single process. I don't know if you have such kind of stuff in Asia, but according to my experience, I didn't find in the Vietnam such kind of literature. So we believe that when you want to go to a textile factory, it would be pretty important to have a general knowledge about such kind of literature. You can easily find out even via internet. I mean, they are pretty common and can help you to uh, define with your customer which it will be the best technology. It's uh, according to us, pretty important to try to convince uh, your customers that uh, sometimes they have to take some risk, maybe have some trials and uh, try to define the best machine in order to consume as less as possible. The water in Vietnam is pretty expensive uh, in Italy, we have uh, water almost for free, especially if you have wells. But uh, according to my experience in Vietnam, uh, water is pretty expensive, especially the worst water treatment cost uh, is, is pretty high. On the other hand, we didn't uh, mention it over here, but you have also to consider uh, the chemical consumption, which is basically related to the water. So uh, we believe uh, that uh, the right machine, uh, and this is uh, just a, a very simple example, the other one it will be a little bit more complicated, but uh, we strongly believe uh, that uh, it's pretty important to, to convince your customer to share with you not just the services, but also machine technology as much as you can. This one uh, shows uh, a, a different type of machine, uh, which is uh, the dye machine for cones or bobbins. In order to better explain you how this machine works, uh, we need uh, uh, to understand uh, how it works, uh, the, the dyeing procedure. Of course, uh, uh, we don't have the time to go into this technology so deeply, but let me give you just uh, a rough idea of what uh, uh, the, the machine does. Normally, this machine is filled by fresh water. You can have a different type of machine that could be fully flooded or iPad system. Fully flooded means that the machine should be pressurized by water directly. And so all the oxygen inside, the, all the air inside the machine is replaced by water and pressurized by a pressurizing pump. Uh, the iPad system, it's uh, a system uh, that is more uh, modern and it's normally used when you have uh, uh, reactive dye stuff. Because if you want to go with bad dye stuff, which is mainly used for shorting, you cannot have oxygen inside your machine. So you are somehow obliged to go on the, on the fully flooded mode. In the airpad system, you must pressurize your gear, your device by using uh, uh, compressed air instead of water. And in this way, the liquor ratio, which is the ratio between the number of liter of water and the kilograms of, uh, of your bobbins, so the kilograms of your yarn, can drop for one by 10, which is the normal solution with uh, um, with a fully flooded system to one by eight. In this case, the consumption during your dyeing procedure, the electrical consumption is around normally when everything goes well, one kilowatt hour per kilogram and the thermal consumption has to be around 15 kilowatt hour per kilogram. Why we need to fill the machine up to one to eight liquid ratio. This is because uh, during the procedure, the pumps uh, reverse is flow from internal to external and uh, external to internal. So if you want to leave uh, the water goes from external to internal, like uh, in this picture, the level of the water must cover the last bobbin in your spindle. If you uh, look 
at uh, the new procedure that many customer, final customer are asking for, uh, like uh, um, Burberry or uh, big, uh, big customer like uh, Zara Group, uh, they are now asking and pushing their uh, own supplier in order to go with machines able to have a liquid ratio lower than one by seven. How they can do that? It's shown in the next uh, uh, slide. It's mainly related to the fact that uh, the flow is not uh, reversed. So in those kinds of machine, which is called uh, pulse wave dying, the flow goes always from uh, internal to external and is not uh, reversed from external to internal. In this case, the liquid ratio could be even lower. So just one by five. And of course your electrical consumption will drop from one to 0 0.7. And accordingly, the thermal consumption can be dropped from 15 to eight by 10 kilowatt per hour. This kind of technology is, uh, I believe, uh, the most modern one. And uh, it's now used by almost every big uh, suppliers of a dyeing machine. So we're talking about Fongs in China and uh, Bellini in Italy or uh, Tis in Germany. All of them are now developing such kind of technology, even that, uh, to be honest, this kind of procedure cannot be used for every kind of dye stuff, it has to be kept just for reactive, according to me. And uh, according to my experience, can be just used on the easy colors. When the, the colors are uh, dye stuff are uh, uh, tough, like orange, like some pink, uh, uh, colors that are very difficult to be solved in the water, this technology cannot be used because uh, the, the final quality will be affected by many small uh, defects, which are made by, uh, let's call them dot, okay, on the fabric. And so the final color will, not, will be not so uniform. But anyhow, I believe that this is the future in something we should uh, look at uh, with, uh, with, of course, uh, the, uh, the suppliers of the dye machine. We made uh, some tests in Albini because, of course, uh, this is something that cannot be uh, sold to, to a final customers uh, without making tests, internal tests, uh, to be sure that uh, it goes in the right direction. But according to me, this is something to look at very, uh, very carefully. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's going to become the next benchmark for, for the future. Maybe easy to understand, but uh, anyway, where I have noted that uh, uh, people didn't care too much about it. I mean, uh, the connection between the big pipes, the manifolds, and your machines. If you put small pipes, especially on the water lines, hot water, cold water lines, if you put small pipes on the steam, you are gonna need more time to fill the machine, to warm the machine, and to reduce the temperature inside the machine. So basically your cycle, your dying procedure is gonna take much more time. It means that it's gonna take much more in terms of cost is because your circulation pumps is running any time. So if your dying procedure takes eight hours, the main pumps will run eight hours. If it takes six hours, it runs six hours. It means that at the end, the electrical cost is will be split will be more or less in relation of uh, uh, based on the on the duration of your cycle so it's pretty important to define to design the right connection between your manifold your all the pipelines basically so the the connection between your system pump to the die house and uh, from the manifold to all the machines. We have done a calculation. Unfortunately, we cannot share all the curves 
with you because as you can imagine, it's something very private for the customers, but the customer we have worked with gave to us all the curves of the thermal procedure and the chemical procedure. So according to all of those diagrams, we were able to calculate the time that they, uh, they lost uh, waiting for uh, uh, fulfill the, the machine, drain the machine, heat the machine, reduce the temperature inside it. And so at the end, the final cost just related to the mistake that they have done in the connection of the machine could be um, calculated in almost 30,000 US dollar. So if you change all the pipes in this dyed house, it means uh, uh, be ready to pay 120,000 US dollar. The payback time, uh, it would be eventually a little bit more than four years. So uh, this is just uh, to give it to you uh, uh, an example of uh, how important uh, he is uh, to design the mechanical uh, uh, distribution for all the fluids in the dye house and finishing, generally speaking, for the textile, because uh, a wrong, a, a mistake on such part of the project is going to affect the running costs of your customer 